Hello! Today I will describe six features of the Nova Scotia Energy Map. The first is the Power Plant Pop-Up feature. This displays information that is specific to each of the energy categories, such as megawatts in annual energy production. Wind farm maps are included where any icon has a plus sign while hovering. Click once on the wind farm to zoom in, and once more to return to the main map. Second, we have the Timeline feature. Everyone has the ability to play the timeline with a video-like control interface. You can go frame by frame, play it as an animation, or drag the playhead to any time on the timeline. There are also fast forward and slow down blue box options. The most important lesson in this feature is that it visually demonstrates the push for greater electrification. Thirdly, we can plan scenarios with the Add Power Plant feature. Looking at the power plant icons on the sidebar on the right, we see the Add Plant interface. Anyone can add wind, water, solar, and either hydrogen or compressed air energy storage. Now I'll add a wind farm to the map. Once we pick a manufacturer, a model of turbine, and a hub height, we see that the Nova Scotia Wind Atlas computes the annual energy production at the bottom of the panel. As soon as we press the Compute button, we notice there is a discrepancy between the Canada Wind Atlas data. This is because we haven't matched our turbine size. Once we match them, and ensure that the Nova Scotia Wind Atlas data is at the closest elevation to the hub height, we see that the numbers are much closer. Wind and Tidal have turbine databases with power curves, while solar energy output is based on panel efficiency area using Green Power Lab's annual averages. Fourth, we'll take a look at the HRM and Tidal Zoom features. Click on the green Halifax area to zoom in. The purpose of this map layer is to focus on infrastructure changes in Halifax. We see that the transportation sector could adapt existing gasoline stations by adding hydrogen fueling pumps supplied by wind, water, and solar technologies. This must consider, at a minimum, existing transmission lines and capacity, roads, households, and the wind and solar resource. This map does not include environmentally and culturally important areas. Zoom out with the green X button. Next, we'll click through each of the tidal maps. And then we'll click once more to return to the main map. Fifth, we assess the rated capacity pie graph feature. This adjusts automatically, i.e. it hides or shows which power plant categories are visible. We can demonstrate this using the checkboxes for each category. If we adjust the timeline, you'll also see these power plants being built on the map. Currently, it only displays rate of capacity values in megawatts, and includes the generalized estimate of annual production based on average capacity factor of all power plant categories in the upper right. Six, we look at the cost of energy calculator and daily usage graph. There's already a behavior entered into the graph, and we'll see how much that actually works out to be. So about 61 watts over a 24-hour period. So the daily usage line graph demonstrates savings or costs of simple behavior modifications, i.e. installing a heat pump to offset electric baseboards, changing light bulbs, or using different patterns of energy usage throughout a 24-hour period, such as having a timer on your hot water heater. You could easily see that by changing your behaviors, you can you can save money throughout the day. 
Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this introduction to the Nova Scotia Energy Map.